What's poppin' Carolina Nation and Pantherologists? Welcome to today's video. The Carolina Panthers' keys to victory, offense and defense, and the prediction versus the Minnesota Vikings. If you're feeling generous today, guys, as always, I ask that you pound that like button, pound the subscribe button so you can so keep getting this raw content that you deserve as Carolina Panther fans. And always leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think. And as always, like I said, click that notifications bell so you keep getting updated with the new raw content as you subscribe. Now, let's dive into today's topics. Let's get into this keys to victory for the Carolina Panthers. Now, the Carolina Panthers will travel to Minnesota to take on the Vikings in an interesting Week 12 matchup. Uh, both teams are technically still in the playoff hunt, but they would need a lot of help to get into the playoffs. That essentially makes this a must-win game for the two four-win teams. The Panthers are coming off a shutout victory against the Detroit Lions last week. The Carolina defense dominated Detroit, making backup quarterback P.J. Walker's job a lot easier. The Vikings are coming off a three-point loss to the Dallas Cowboys. So, it's safe to say that the season has not gone the way that either franchise would have liked. Time is running out to the right ship. The Panthers will need a boost from their offense in this game as they cannot expect another shutout from their defense. So, here are my three keys to the game for the Panthers offense and defense. All right, three keys each. So the first one is we're going to start with the offense side of the ball. And the first one is get playmakers involved early. So the Panthers will likely be without all pro running back Christian McCaffrey for yet another week. Carolina has no shortage of playmakers. However, you got DJ Moore, Robbie Anderson, Curtis Samuel. Make a, up an arguably the league's most talented trio of wide receivers. Number two running back, Mike Davis, is no slouch either. I mean, think about it. Last week, Walker did an excellent job of getting his uh, playmakers the ball early. Starting quarterback Teddy Bridgewater is back in action and just in time to face his former team. Now, he will need to distribute the ball to his talented pass catchers. All game long, in order to keep up with the high scoring Minnesota offense, Moore and Anderson can do wonders for an offense with the ball after the catch. All Teddy has to do is hit his receivers on quick routes and let them do the rest. Next key on the offensive side maintain an early lead. There's no secret that the Vikings love to run the ball. Dalvin Cook is the number two leading rusher in the NFL, trailing only Derrick Henry. The Panthers' defense has struggled to defend the run this season, as we all know. The offense can help out a lot by taking a lead early, getting off to a 10-0 or 14-3 type of start could go a long way in determining if the Panthers leave Minnesota with a victory or not. Now, if they can put the Vikings in position that they are uncomfortable with, then they might be able to force a mistake or two. If the Panthers win the opening coin toss, they should elect to receive the ball, score touchdowns rather than field goals is the other key that goes along with this. Man, Next key uh, for the offensive side of the ball, use Mike Davis on the perimeter. Mike Davis got off to an amazing start when he first took over for the injured Christian McCaffrey, but he has cooled off in recent weeks. I think the main reason for this is, is that the Panthers have gone away from utilizing him as a receiver and, and on outside runs. The 5'9", 229 pounder fits the body type of a running back that runs north and south. However, he is actually most effective, if you go watch, when he can get outside of the tackles and make defenders miss 
with his juke moves. Carolina has seemed to change their running scheme to a more traditional straight up the middle type of offense since the prolonged absence of McCaffrey. So I think it's time to get back to utilizing Davis as a pass catcher. Now Davis has enough speed and elusiveness to break off long runs. We've seen it. Carolina just needs to adjust their scheme to get the ball in open space. Next, defensive side of the ball. That We're going to go ahead and get into that. The first key into this is keep Dalvin Cook under 100 yards rushing. I know that's easier said than done, but if the Panthers have any chance of leaving Minnesota with a win, they have to limit Cook's success. In games where Cook has rushed over 100 yards, the Vikings are 4-2. and two. In the games in which Cook goes under 100 yards, Minnesota is 1-3. and three. Carolina has not done a good job containing the rushing attack all season long, and stopping Cook will have to be the number one goal for this defense. You can't arm tackle this guy or trip him up. You're going to have to swarm him and gang tackle him or square him up. Next key. Don't let Justin Jefferson get behind the secondary. So the Vikings rookie receiver enters week 12 ranked second in the entire NFL yards per catch. He averages 18.8 yards per catch. A lot of that has to do with his speed, but it also comes from knowing how to find the open areas in the defense. Jefferson is playing well beyond his rookie status, and I would suggest that Carolina will have to force him to catch balls underneath and dare him to beat the defense that way. Next one. Burns creating havoc again. Brian Burns had a terrific game last week versus Detroit. and I mean, he earned the NFC Defensive Player of the Week honors after registering two tackles. And four quarterback hits. I know it's hard to follow up a performance like that. But I firmly believe that Burns has a three-sack game in him. And it's coming soon. Getting pressure on Kirk Cousins makes Minnesota a one-dimensional team. And in turn, makes it easier to key in on Dalvin Cook in the rushing attack. Now, let's get into my prediction. I'm predicting 28-17, the Panthers. Dalvin Cook is a monster, and I fully expect him to have a fantastic day on the ground. Carolina's defense will probably give up more than a few big plays because of him. However, I believe that the Panthers' offense can make more big plays. The Vikings' defense is arguably just as bad as Carolina's. The difference here is that the Panthers have more playmakers. And another thing, Adam Thielen is also out. So that makes Minnesota's chances of winning even slimmer. It should be a close game, but Carolina has too much on offense with or without McCaffrey for the Vikings to handle, in my opinion. I trust Teddy Bridgewater and the Panthers more than I tr- than Kirk Cousins and, and hit company. In the turnover category, I'm also looking for Carolina to get back to the utilizing Mike Davis early in the season and get him more involved on the outside runs and in the passing game to keep the chains moving and drain the clock. So guys, that is my keys to victory on the offense and defensive side of the ball for the Carolina Panthers. Guys, if you haven't already, Pound that like button. If you're feeling generous, pound the subscribe button. Comment down below. Click that notifications bell so you get updated with the new videos. And as always, guys, Panther Nation, Pantherologists, keep pounding.